I am an ego blogger. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, what on earth is an ego blogger? I personally prefer to call myself a personal style blogger. But I recently went on a trip to Spain and I heard this term ego bloggers and I thought it was a very interesting concept, but why? Why do they call us ego bloggers? Because what we do is we take photos of ourselves and we post them on the internet. Now, a lot of you might be thinking that this is a very strange and even narcissistic concept, but the fact is that these kind of blogs are getting bigger and bigger. And I feel like the demand for these kind of blogs relies on the concept of reality. Now, people are hungry for real inspiration. We don't want to rely on the magazines to feed us with these amazing editorials of these beautiful models wearing extremely expensive clothes. We want to see this on real people. We want to see what people around the world are wearing, and most importantly, we want to see them on clothes that we can afford. I was born in Mexico, and I was very tall for a Mexican girl. We are all the same age. That's me with a guitar. And my mom used to find it impossible to find clothes that fitted, especially pants, and she had to make them herself. And I used to find it fascinating that we didn't have to go to the store and buy a ready-made pair of pants, that we could make it from scratch. So at the age of seven, I remember begging my mom to teach me how to sew. And I think it was that moment in my life that triggered this fashion obsession of mine. But now, for a young girl growing up in Mexico, starting fashion design was not an option. Everybody kept telling me that it was a useless degree to have on my CV. They told me, you can't study fashion, and I let that get into my head, and I decided to go for interior design instead. But then, I used to find myself sketching clothes on my breaks, don't tell my teachers, and uh, sewing clothes at night on my dorm instead of making my homework. And I thought, there, I have to do something about this. And that's when I had to make one of the hardest decisions of my life back then, and I decided to drop out of university and chase my dream of studying fashion design. Then after I dropped out of university, an opportunity came for me to come to the city, and I thought, Paris is three hours away. I could really, really make it there. And I didn't even have an, any limitation. I thought, it's the line of fashion, and I, I, anything is possible. I can make it there. Naively, I thought that. Unfortunately, the reality was a lot different, and I find myself jobless for over a year. I applied for internships in every single fashion magazine in town, and they all said no. And I miss my family a lot. I didn't have any friends. I didn't know anybody. But I still had that drive, and I still had that dream inside me, and I thought, why am I going to give up? I'm not going to give up. And one day, when I was sitting in my bed, I thought, what can I do? to get myself noticed, where can I make my voice heard? And then it finally hit me as if it was being so obvious all along, the internet. I started my blog on the 26th of November of 2007, four years ago last weekend. And when I started, I began gathering all the sewing knowledge that I have learned from my mother when I was a child. And I started posting do-it-yourself projects on the blog, which was basically showing my readers how to make their clothes step by step. But then one day, I was flipping through a magazine, and I was looking at an editorial, and I thought, what if I could do this, but with affordable brands? So then I began translating the looks from the magazines and the runway shows in, in my own personal style, with the brands that my readers could afford, and it, it, it somehow worked. I mean, nowadays, uh, I find that people want to see what I'm doing. They are interested. And millions of people look at my blog every month. Uh, Style Scrapbook has over 71,000 uh, likes on Facebook and over 30,000 followers on Twitter. But what made my blog so successful? Oh, that's my DIYs. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to try to break it down into three main areas. There's a lot more, but I'm going to squeeze it in. Great content. Now, you have to have great content. This is very important. And on that falls, you have to great, have great quality photography. Now, when I started my blog, I didn't start with a professional camera. And when you see the photos from before, that was me before. That was me on Fashion Week last September um, in New York. It's a huge difference. In, in, and you won't start with uh, professional-looking photos. But it's a process, and practice makes perfect. So just keep practicing, and you'll get there. Also, you have to keep a good flow of content. 
post as often as you can. I know that it's not possible to post every day. It's difficult. But the blogosphere is getting so big that if you don't post often, people will forget about you and they will move on to the next blog. So you ca have to keep uh, reminding people that you're there. Now, um, on good quality content is also put your personality across. Now, the reason why people love personal style blogs is because they feel like they can connect with you. They feel like they can, they can relate to you, like they have gotten to know you in the time they follow you. So always put your personality on your text. Tell them stories, tell them anecdotes, make them feel happy, make them laugh, make them cry in your text. The moment that people feel related and like they can connect with you, they will come back for more. Now, the second one, and it's very important, to build yourself a strong social network. And this is one of the most important parts. And with that comes to communicate. People won't guess that you're out there. You have to tell them. You have to invite them to come into your blog. You have to go visit all your favorite blogs and tell them, I just started this amazing blog that is going to change your lives. Catch them with that phrase. And then little by little, people will start coming. And that, that, that group is going to multiply. And it won't happen overnight. It's not going to be like all these massive people are going to come. But I can assure you that the ball is going to start getting bigger and people will start coming. You also have to build yourself really strong social media channels. Twitter and Facebook are the ones that I use, and I recommend to use that because they are huge traffic generators for the blog. Every morning when I have a post up on my blog, I go on those two and I let people know that I have a new post and the traffic that comes from there is incredible. So build yourself really strong social media channels. And the last one, but not least, is be yourself. And this might seem pretty obvious, and it might seem like, well, be yourself. But this is very important. Don't try to copy other people. If you try to copy other bloggers, and you've tried to replicate them, remember that these people will be a lot better at being themselves than you will ever be. So you're already setting yourself to be second at best. So always be yourself. Put your personality across. People will know that you're being genuine, and they will like that, and they will come back. And I, I, I learned so much through the past four years. And I think one of the things that I've learned the most and that, that is stay, this stays be, like with me the most is that I mustn't be afraid to try. And I want to leave you with a quote that I always remind myself whenever I feel like I can't do something, when I feel like I need that push for motivation and I feel like in doubt, and it goes something like, only who, those who risk going too far can possibly find out how far they can go. So I really advise you to do the same. Thank you.